This is eHobbyist Blog, a log of electronics hobbyist activities aimed at city dwellers who have limited space, limited money, and limited time. My name is Neil. Welcome. In the last video, I did some preliminary testing on the 723-based positive power supply. And I had an electrolytic capacitor blow up on me. But as I proceeded with the testing, it, it seemed to work. The, the voltage was properly adjustable. The current adjustment was not affecting the voltage at all. And I'm reasonably confident that that board would have worked as a power supply. However, the exploding capacitor was the last straw. I've had it with a circuit. I'm going to retire it. I'll keep the documentation for the circuit up on the website in the event there's any future interest. I am, however, going to be moving on to Plan B. Plan B involves a different voltage regulator IC, the Linear Technologies 3080, which is a more modern chip and much simpler to design around. All it requires is a adjustable resistor to establish the output voltage, and you need a minimum of 4.7 microfarad capacitor on the output. And in theory, you could put something together just as straightforward and simple as that. It is a low dropout regulator, so that you can get very close to the input voltage. Moreover, it has built-in thermal regulation and current regulation at 1.1 amps. What it lacks, however, is the uh, adjustable current limit. But in the application notes, they uh, indicate a means of doing that with yet a second LT3080 set up as a current regulator. So you have a current regulator feeding your voltage regulator, and therefore you have current limiting. I'll be using the TO220 version of the LT3080, which has got five pins. One of them is not connected. Let me just come up with a circuit diagram for this. So I have the uh, pinout, hopefully the proper pinout for the integrated circuit. Just uh, draw in the input power and the negative. From the diagram, one can see that the, the common is not connected to the chip in any way, shape, or form, unlike the 723 chip. I have drawn this with the input pin connected to the control voltage, and that is possible, and there are some versions of this integrated circuit that are produced with internally connected in this way. That's not the way I intend to proceed in the final version. You do need a minimum output capacitance. According to the spec sheet, it's a 4.7 microfarad capacitor. Since I don't have any of those, I'll be using a 10 microfarad capacitor. And you need a, a resistor that establishes the output voltage. There's 10 microamps going through the set pin. You use a resistor accordingly to set the output voltage. So the output voltage equals 10 microamps multiplied by your set resistor, R1, to give a maximum of 25 volts, my calculator indicates 2.5 megaohm resistance. That introduces certain problems. With resistances that high, the demon Johnson comes into play. He introduces noise in any high-value resistance. There are equations to determine just the amplitude of the noise. First, over the, over the frequency, it's a white noise that's generated. However, if you don't care about the noise because of its low amplitude, you don't need anything else. On the output capacitance, I like to put capacitors in parallel every couple of decades. So if I'm using a 10 microfarad capacitor, I'm going to put a 0.1 microfarad disk capacitor in parallel with it. And the idea is to make sure that the impedance at higher frequencies remains low. Getting back to the set resistor, I want to get rid of this thermal noise. The spec sheet indicates that you can use a capacitor as high as one microfarad, so I'm going to slap a one microfarad tantalum capacitor across this high value 
2.5 mega ohm resistor R1 and parallel with that I'm going to put a 0.01 microfarad disk capacitor. Hopefully that will reduce much of the effect of the thermal noise and banish the demon Johnson. Now as for the input voltage, I would like to make sure that the control part of the integrated circuit doesn't see any variation on the input side as a result of the chip compensating for variations in, in the load. If I've got a load that corresponds to, say, 1 megahertz square wave, that variation is going to be reflected in the input as the voltage regulator draws power to compensate. And I want to filter that out from the control voltage of a chip itself. And so what I'm doing here is I've got a 100 microfarad electrolytic. In parallel with that, a 1 microfarad tantalum. In parallel with that, a 0.01 microfarad disk capacitor, all aimed at preventing the kind of positive feedback that can result. Finally, to further isolate the control voltage from the input voltage, I put uh, diode D1 in place, and this is uh, it's effectively putting another half-wave rectifier across the control voltage to keep any input ripple out of the control voltage. I do have this notion of trying to protect the power supply from me, and one of the protections I want to guard against is that the output line becomes higher in voltage than the input line, and this can happen as if you have a capacitive load and you just shut off the power. The diode here is aimed at routing higher voltage output to the input. Another protecting diode is a diode going the wrong way, quote unquote, going from the negative line to the positive line. And that's just in place there to guard against uh, crossed wires on the output. This is uh, an external power supply aimed at feeding prototype systems, a system that you're just building for the first time. You have no clue as to what it's going to do. And so, yes, it's entirely possible for lines to get crossed or misconnected in one way or another. In the previous banished evil positive power supply, the 723 based power supply, I discovered that I couldn't really get any decent voltage adjustment unless I had an output load. And there's some alluding to that buried in the application notes of the LT3080 chip, uh, indicating that you have to have at least one milliamp of output current running to guarantee proper regulation. There's a kind of a hedge that I wasn't quite comfortable with. I don't know about it, but a 1K resistor across the output can't hurt. It does mean you're using up some power. If it turns out that that's not necessary, I can always remove R2 with the diagonal cutters. Because this circuit is relatively simple, I decided I'm not going to create a printed circuit board for it. I'm going to use a strip board. There is some problem here in that the layout of the 3080 chip is not really consistent with any strip board I know of. It doesn't match up with a 0.1 inch uh, grid. It doesn't match up with a 0.15 inch grid. Well, this is a 0.1 inch grid. I intend to use copper foil and solder blobs and large drill bits to somehow manage to connect the 3080 chip to the strip board. First one needs to put the capacitor in. It's an absolute requirement across the output from the output to a ground. Got two ground lines and they are connected by a jumper. In parallel with that output capacitor, 10 microfarad is a 0.1 microfarad disk capacitor. And now I need two capacitors across the set pin aimed at reducing thermal noise from the associated 2.5 mega ohm tensiometer. In addition, I need three capacitors across the control line of the chip aimed at preventing oscillation. I've got the diode running from the input voltage to the control voltage. The diode plus the three capacitors presents another half-wave rectifier that, aside from protecting against positive feedback oscillation, also presents another half-wave rectifier that further reduces input ripple. 
and a protective diode that goes from the output to the input in the event that a capacitive load winds up at a higher voltage than the input when you turn off the power, and a diode running from ground to the output in the event the wires get crossed and the ground line somehow winds up to be at a higher potential than the output of the regulator. Cross wire could do that. Then we have the load resistor, and finally I need to put some brackets in there because this thing is going to be bolted to the top panel of the enclosure. We have a layout diagram for strip board. Now I'm going to cut strip board into two two inch by two inch squares. First mark it with a drawing pen, indelible ink, we hope. I could have gotten away with 2 inch by 1.9, but I'll give it another tenth. I'm using 0.1 inch by 0.1 inch grid strip board. I think this stuff is epoxy fiberglass. And I'm using a keel saw. That wide blade means I get a relatively straight cut. And this stuff cuts rather easily, so I'm beginning to wonder whether this is in fact epoxy fiberglass. We have a two inch long piece, and now we need to cut this in half. Using a C-clamp and the folded paper is there to prevent the clamp from marring the board. Now I've cut out the pieces and I need to smooth out the edges using a flat file. The idea here is first to make sure that the edges are flat and smooth and are not going to cut me, but also to make sure that the conducting strips don't overlay the board and get inadvertently caught up in all manner of short circuits. This black thingy on the lower left corner is a magnifying light that shouldn't be there, and if certain directors were doing their job, they wouldn't be there. I can't do everything, like watch what it is I'm photographing, and file the board at the same time. I would be doing two things at once. The filing actually took about 15 minutes, of which you only get to see two. In this video, I scrapped the LM723 version of a variable positive power supply. I presented the LT3080 voltage regulator chip. I drew a circuit diagram of the Plan B variable positive power supply and a strip board layout for it. And... I started construction of Plan B. In the next video, we will continue construction. If you like this video and the idea of the channel, click on the YouTube thumbs up icon. If you want to be notified as to when the next video is available, click on the YouTube subscribe button. If you want to suggest future directions or topics, make corrections to published videos, or voice your opinion on related matters, then leave a YouTube comment. If you want to see supplementary material that cannot be easily presented in video form, such as high-res graphics, files in different formats, lists of references, uh, go to the corresponding website. Until the next time, good day.